following is a presentation of the iRacing Esports Network. Well, here we are once again back in the United States for the second time in the Season 4 V8 Supercars Official Series Championship. Albeit, albeit this time just about as far away as possible from Laguna Seca in the southwest, we are very much in the northwest at the fantastic, the classic, and the fan favorite Watkins Glen International Circuit. And using the boot layout, which means tonight's slipstreaming will be a huge factor as they fight for grip through the S's before playing a game of chicken on the brakes into the infamous bus stop chicane. The order for the day is 31 laps past the start-finish line on the racetrack, but also once more down the pit lane with teams and drivers only being allowed to use 45% of their fuel tank for tonight as they embark for 32 laps total. Dan Blacklock, he leads the championship some 49 points clear of Brett Loxton, but his 100% win rate in the strength of field races was ruined last time out in a thrilling showdown at Alton Park. Will he be able to bounce back or will Brett Loxton and co begin to apply more and more pressure? We're about to find out as we're live on the iRacing Esports Network, broadcasted by VH Online, which tonight includes myself, Bo Albert, and alongside me is my Logitech G Ultra Esports teammate, Zach Hanlon, with everyone's favorite Kiwi, Scott Fountain. Sorry, Cam Dance. But Zach, Watkins Glen is a very interesting track with over a hundred different lines to take, which means in the qualifying session the drivers are in right now, every meter of racetrack can be used to maximize their lap time. Yeah, Watkins Glen is just such a racer's circuit. It's one of my favorite circuits personally because there are so many different lines that you can use to work and there might be a thousandth or a hundredth in it here and there, but for the most part, you can kind of put the, tra the car on the track to your liking and you can make it work. So a lot of these guys are going to be looking to use pretty much the preferred line um, that most drivers will take just to get the absolute maximum out of the lap time. But I think that 
during this race is where we're going to see a lot of side-by-side -side action, particularly through uh, through the shoot and the toe as well um, in the boot section here at Washington's Glen. It's going to be an absolutely fantastic race, and uh, I know that one we're going to be speaking about for a little while, I think. Yeah, absolutely. One thing we're going to be speaking about right now is 45 degrees track temp. This is as hot as I have ever seen in one of these broadcaster splits for many seasons. So for the drivers today, they're really having to work and in very horrible conditions as uh, at the moment, top of the time sheets is Ethan Warren, who is not a name we see all too often. And he's on screen right now through the bus stop chicane. You can see he's using as much curb through there as you like. And uh, now Kurt Stenberg goes second. So quite a few names we don't often see in this series, but it's fantastic to see. And Brett Loxon currently third at the moment, just three hundredths behind Kurt Stenberg. And uh, he's very much fighting for this championship against Sam Blacklock who currently is on his first lap, coming into the final few corners now, and hasn't got his first lap on the board, but he's about to set his first one, Zach. Yeah, Sam Blacklock really needs to uh, get up there on the timing sheets. Last time out, he didn't qualify particularly well, but uh, luckily for him, and to his credit, he did get a very good start, and uh, ended up putting himself very well in the race, but there he goes up to P1, just as we are saying that. So Sam Blacklock at the moment has provisional pole, and it has to be said, by a comfortable margin. There are still a few people who are going to be challenging that time. A couple of people we uh, would expect to put in a good time haven't set a lap yet. And uh, also the likes of, uh, well, actually, Corey Preston on his second lap has had a massive accident. Uh, so there will be no challenge from uh, from behind for Sam Blacklock from Corey Preston. But there are other still drivers on their second lap. And uh, I would feel that... Uh, as Wayne Burke just goes up into P2 very closely behind. I feel, as you just mentioned, with those 45-degree track temps, these tyres are going to be absolutely screaming after you've put a lap's worth of really hard uh, force through them. And I don't think that many people are going to be able to improve on their second lap unless they had a bit of an ordinary first one. And one driver that had an ordinary first lap was Dane Warren. His first lap did not count. Highest I-rated driver. He's on his second lap now. And like you say, these tyres are going to have nothing left. Probably when he started the lap. So he is on tyres that are not at all optimal. And a driver we would definitely be expecting to, you know, be a very big favourite to win this race. Let's not forget, he won season one of this championship. As we, are, we go on board at the moment with Dane Warren heading into the final few corners of this boot layout. Uh, so it's not the NASCAR layout that we're using. It's this much longer IMSA-style layout, which I think is a little bit better in some ways uh, for our right racing. Not so much slipstreaming, but Dane Waring now making his way through this track. And you can see that the front tire is just not biting in any way, shape, or form. They've got nothing left. And, well, I would he would have been my favorites to go to pole. But, Zach, I think at the end of this lap, he's not going to be anywhere close. It might have to be a top five start at best. Yeah, well, he's keeping it nicely in between those uh, bits of grippy concrete through the final section of the track. So he's got some nice traction coming out of the final corner, comes down to the line. He's only got a handful of seconds left before this session is closed. But wow, wow a 152.574 from Dane Warren puts him in position number two, just nine thousandths ahead of uh, Synergy Sim Racing's Wayne Burke, but still uh, about 2.3 tenths behind TTR's Sam Blacklock. So some very competitive times up at the top of the timing screens there. And uh, it's gonna, I really think both, there's a few guys in the top of this uh, in the top of this field right now. We've also got Brett Loxton, hasn't put in as good as a qualifying performance as we probably would have expected, but we've seen Brett throughout the last few races of this series, he has been charging forward through the field. And at a place like Watkins Glen, where you can do a lot of racing, I think Brett Loxton's going to be one to watch out for tonight. Yeah, he absolutely will be. And of course, he's fighting with uh, Sam Blacklock for the championship. But the problem for him is that Sam Blacklock has taken pole position for round number four of this championship. Dane Warren will line up alongside him on the front row of the grid with Wayne Burke and Ethan Warren, a very scary row number two. Kurt Stenberg gets himself into the top five and he's joined alongside by Brett Loxon, who we expect to come flying through the field. Corey Preston, well, you said he had a bit of a crash on his second lap. He'll be hoping to make it 32 laps without having an incident. We have seen him have a few rough races. Can he turn her around? Last time we saw Cooper Webster, he lines up in P number eight. He was challenging for the win. It's going to be tough from that grid slot with Thomas McMillan and Brenton Hobson, your top 10. 
Yeah, then we have Harley Haber in P number 11. He's put in some good performances. Hope to see a bit from him tonight from P11. Brett Cananzi in P number 12. Andrew Welter will start from 13th position along alongside the meme machine, Adam Highland in position number 14. Carl Stokes takes top 15 position next to Riley Blythe from Evolution Racing Team. Look for him as well. Very racy. Mihal Ladyshov in 17th position. Warren Pickering in 18th. Chris Coxhead will start from 19th position. Andrew Zakerson from 20th and uh, then we have Guy Leach, Greg Sharp, Michael Cracknell, David Miller and Tim Weston rounding out our 25 grid car here tonight in the in the iRacing V8 Supercars official championship. Yep, absolutely. And it should be a cracker. We've seen some very good finishes here at Watkins Glen in the past. There's always a little bit of drama, always a little bit of strategy and there will be once again, like we said, they will be taking a single pit stop in this race as well with 45% track usage. Uh, sorry, uh, fuel usage only available to them and 32 laps. It's going to be very tricky indeed. But the clocks are going to count down to zero and the revs are going to rise to get 32 laps here at Watkins Glen underway in just a few moments time. It's a long hold on the lights, but they're finally away. And Sam Blacklock will get the field away and it's a great start further down the field. I think that's Corey Preston immediately making some spots up there as the cars go three wide into turn number one, all trying to jostle for position as they now make their way into a very tough 90 right. And then they're still side by side on the exit for the most part. Looks like we're relatively clean, which is great to see. But the real challenge comes now through the S's. A few cars still side by side, which is not where you want to be. One of the ERT cars, Cooper Webb's the side by side with Thomas McMillan through the S's. They both survive very close in the background as well. As they make their way down this long straight once again. And still Webster and McMillan continue to make their way side by side. And that is some great racing immediately at the start of the race. But the big talking point at the moment is Sam Blackhawk continues to lead. Dane Warren hot on his heels though and not going to let them get away with a very feisty field behind, including Wayne Burke, Ethan Warren, and Corey Preston, your top five after a magnificent start. Oh, yes, and one of the ASM cars slow, I think. Yes, I think that's uh, McMillan possibly, yeah, just running uh, a little slowly as he now comes around the outside coming through the toe and uh, that's going to put him up against Adam Highland in the meme machine. It's going to have the preferred line as they come down into uh, into the toe section now, pardon me, and not and just able to uh, squeeze up on the inside of Adam Highland there. So not a complete disaster as we see another car going for a bit of a move, just jerking outside there. That's Hobson and just up ahead of him, Harley Haber having a look now on Cooper Webster into the heel and now he's going to have to go round the outside at turn number nine. Very difficult corner, very flat corner, and the grip is on the inside. That different coloured pavement there. Very grippy, and Haber almost loses it coming out of the exit of the corner and almost bumps into Webster, but manages to keep that car controlled for the time being. And uh, he's now going to have to uh, try something else for Cooper Webster, but kudos to these 25 drivers. Looks, off to, looks like we're off to one of the cleanest starts that we have seen all season. And uh, Sam Blacklock doing a great job out in front at the moment. Dane Warren still very much hot on his heels. In fact, there's no real gap in these uh, top seven cars except from Loxton to Webster. So it's pretty close racing so far. Yep, and that's exactly what we like to see is more positions change in the background heading into turn number one, which is a great uh, place to get a pass done. But for our leaders, was that Sam Blacklock hitting the wall slightly? If it wasn't, it was extremely close as he tries to get the best run possible onto this back straight where passing is going to be a real opportunity later on. But Dane Warren, not close enough this time around, but you could see just how much he was gaining down the straight in that uh, retro livery, uh, livery for ASM. So uh, that's a very quick car underneath him today. And he won the championship in season one. So this is the season one versus the season three champions going at it right now. And that's not something we've seen at all this season. We've only seen drivers, you know, in season one, we saw Warren pretty much run away with it. The same with uh, Marlon McMullen in season two. Sam Blacklock had a bit of a closer fight in season three, but we've never seen two champions in a single race really go head to head in a long time, Zach. And we've got that showdown here today. Yeah, absolutely, and Dane Warren is very fast in these cars, and you can see him right now, very aggressive on the rear bumper of Sam Blacklock, and we've seen Dane, the problem with Dane is Dane is fast, he's exciting, he gets the moves done, but we have to wait until the pit stop, because the pit stop for Dane Warren is where it always comes undone, so 
I think for him, it's pretty critical to, to get that move done early, try and build himself a little bit of a lead out front. But around Watkins Glen, we've been talking about the draft a little bit. It's just so easy. You can see even there's a little bit of a gap forming now between four, five, and six, but all those cars are still pretty close. And just having that draft there can keep you in the battle so much more. And uh, if one person makes a mistake, it can really mean that you can close up to them a lot better. But oh. um, just We're having getting... a look now, yeah, P18. Yeah, this is quite a fight at the moment. As they all headed to turn them on, Gailich goes for a huge move up the inside. Mihail Ladishov, and he just about manages to make it happen. Greg Sharp up the inside of a Michael Cracknell as well. is a bit further down the field than he would have liked. But uh, now Wayne Burke finds himself with a very good run down the back straight. And you said that Dane Warren could come unstuck in the pit stop. So he has to be saving fuel right now. He was very lucky to hold on to that position as they funnel now into the bus stop chicane. As Burke got a very good run, but couldn't do anything with it. Of course, you do sometimes see slightly better racing down the um, main back straight when we don't have that bus stop chicane. But it is here in this layout, which just means a bit more strategy to play out here in this race. As now Brett Cananzi finds himself in a bit of a battle pack as he goes and tries to defend from the meme machine heading into the boot section now. He just about holds onto it, but there's a lot of jostling in this mid-pack, Zach. Yeah, these guys are all going pretty hard, and as I said, it's one of those places where you can take a few different lines to be fast, so it doesn't necessarily... It's not the end of the world if you miss an apex or you run a little wide or you run a little high or low or something like that. You can generally work it out on the other end of the corner, and everyone can kind of make that work to their advantage, so... See a few. I've seen already a few different drivers, uh, especially in the top three. Dane Warren and Wayne Burke really like a tight line through the outer loop, which is the long right-hand uh, downhill corner. As Brett Cananzi has a little bit of a look on Andrew Welter there, um, but Sam Blacklock actually likes to go very wide and then cut back in. And all the cars, as we can see, within four tenths of a second as they come over the line, it's um, really going to put on some good racing this evening. But. You do really have to rely on uh, working out what your opponent is doing and see if you can figure out something better than that to work their way around. And you can see Kananzi doing that right now. He's just dancing over little parts of the track, figuring out where he can make a move. It's not going to be into turn one this time. Very good on the brakes, though, is Kananzi getting some very good traction as they come out of turn number one. A little bit of a clip on the grass there. And this is a very difficult corner in the V8 with the spool diff just pushing up the hill. So hard to get traction and Kurt Stenberg just behind them as well or uh, just up Ooh, the Oh, Kanansi with a huge slide through the S's that was right out sideways and that's excuse the Mark Scaith uh, quote there but that was maximum commitment we'll get a replay there the entire way up the hill the car was just breaking traction bit by bit and uh, he was very lucky not to have a huge shunt there uh, as he goes right behind the back of Andrew Welter who um, is running in the Velocity Sim Racing Colors. A driver I haven't seen one Velocity Sim Racing Colors uh, for a while, so maybe a new pickup for them. But uh, Andrew Welter, very known for having a helmet that has his name written all over it. But uh, at the moment, doing a great job against Brett Cananzi, who's a very seasoned driver. He took a few months off last year, but has really come back and really in a strong position, constantly fighting for these wins or, you know, very good results. And uh, whilst today might not be his best showing position-wise, he's always a driver you don't want to have in your mirrors. Uh, absolutely not, but I'm just looking up the field a bit further here, Bo. Corey Preston and Kurt Stenberg are really getting into it now. Kurt's been looking very under control with his car, just attacking Corey in different spots of the racetrack and forcing him to uh, probably not run the car as ideally as he would like. And you can see the rear of that cross-continental motorsports car just squirreling all the way around the track and just not keeping it in the grooves that he really wants to be keeping it in. And Kurt Stenberg's also getting a little bit of a hurry up here from Loxton. So there's a bit of pressure for Kurt to get a move on Corey Preston. You can see the, the gap back from fourth place, Ethan Warren to Corey Preston. It's extended out to nearly two seconds now. And that's pretty much the biggest gap that we have in our field as it stands at the moment. So Kurt Stenberg really getting a bit of a hurry on here from Brett Loxton to uh, make something happen. And I saw both of, uh, Corey Preston actually had two accidents in qualifying. Both of them were through this S's section here. So he's obviously running the car on the very edge of what is possible with gripping that. And uh, it's starting to uh, unravel a little bit for him. Just five laps in here. So would be interesting to see how uh, he goes throughout that stint. But now Kananzi just trying once again up the inside of Andrew Walter at the bus stop. Couldn't quite get it done though. Andrew living a good amount of racing room there, but Brett Kananzi's gonna fire it down the inside, taking a very, very tight line. 
through the outer loop there gives him some good traction he's gonna have to go the long way round though as they come into the shoot and you can do that if you've uh if you've got the fortitude to do it you can go around the outside and adam and andrew they're leaving just enough room for brett Canandi to slide around the outside and that gives him the inside into the toe and that's a job done for Canandi. but also who's that in the main machine it's adam highland he wants a bit of this too he's gonna go try and go up the inside as uh, andrew had to leave the door open there and he might just run out of ponies down this straight unless he can go late on the brakes which he does do goes to the inside and adam highland with some good heads up driving there gets himself up alongside Andrew he's gonna have to go the long way around and this is where it is more difficult to do and he might even lose another position here to Riley Blythe who's gonna try and cut up the inside we've got two by two by two here at Watkins Glen ladies and gentlemen unfortunately for Adam Highland he's gonna get hung out to dry on the outside but as we've said you can make it work two by two all the way around this circuit and these guys are going at it 100% Riley Blythe a little daily and Andrew Welter my goodness didn't he do a good job to pull that up but now they're going three wide down into turn number one who is the bravest on the brakes oh it's hard to tell but it's Riley Blythe that gets the job done in the end and uh Kyle Stokes is also moving himself up in there and Warren Pickering so Andrew Welter from uh, being up just behind or ahead of Brett Nancy has now lost four positions in a matter of a few corners there, but fantastic racing by all those guys to uh, come out on the other side of that unscathed. Yeah, absolutely. That is why we love these V8s, because you can pass just about anywhere if you're brave enough. You can do it on the tracks, you can do it on the brakes, just about anywhere is an opportunity if you're brave enough, and that pack racing there was absolutely stunning. And a lot of drivers changing positions, a lot of drivers trying to defend positions as well. And uh, that was fantastic to see as they were all dicing it out. But in the meantime, our leaders had closed up quite a bit. And it's turn number one. They were just about bumping each other all the way through turn number one. Because you had Warren into the back of Blacklock and Burke into the back of Warren. Nothing to, nothing to try and, you know, spin the other driver. But it was all just unsettling each, each of the drivers, all, you know, throughout the entire corner. So that were really fight, fighting. And again, Dane Warren getting so close to the back of Blacklock into this section of track. And now he's really starting to put the pressure on, trying to make a move happen in the next few laps. And now he's got the pace on Blacklock. It has to be said, he's even got the fast lap of the race by two tenths uh, over Sam Blacklock. And one of only two cars to make his way into the 52 margin. The other was his teammate, and Ethan Warren, who is hanging in there in fourth place as well. So our top four at the moment doing a great job. All line of stern and once again, keeping it as close as possible to set up any move up the S's and into the infamous bus stop. And this is something we've seen all season, Bo. The top four cars always find a way to stick together and put on a show to the very end. I mean, at Alton Park last week, it was a little bit different. We still had the two up front, but it all came together at the end. And these guys are putting on a great performance right now. It is so difficult, especially in these V8 supercars, to be racing so intensely close to each other and not just make an absolute mess of it. So we've got to give 100% credit to all four of these guys for doing such a good job. But those three guys in the uh, podium positions right now, Burke, Warren, and Blacklock, they're, um, they're running a pretty high-intensity race right now. And I think Dane probably got that faster slap, maybe backed off a bit, got that draft back up, and, and it's now been hanging on to the back of Blacklock. So there's maybe a little bit of pace advantage there with help from the draft. And if he does get by, it'll be interesting to see if he is able to uh, pick up the pace a little bit and break away from this pack. But... He's just not quite able to get up alongside Blacklock at the moment, although he is looking closer and closer as the corners go by. And uh, we're on board now with Dane Warren as Sam Blacklock just slips a little bit up the track. And that's going to allow Warren an opportunity maybe to come down into the heel for a bit of a pass down the inside. He's almost bumping the back of the TTR Commodore there. Very late on the brakes for all three cars as they're virtually running within a cigarettes paper with of each other there and uh it looks like they're all gonna get through as they were it's very bizarre because it's very high intensity and they're all so close and even ethan warren now is right back on this is now a four car sandwich but no one's really doing anything no one's going for the dive no one's pulling out no one's showing any real aggression i think they might just be trying to force each other into a mistake where an opportunity can occur because they have a decent lead right now. You know, it's only four seconds back to Corey Preston, which is a fair margin. But if these guys start battling all four of them between each other, that margin can just get torn up so quickly. 
Yeah, it absolutely can. And last time around it, they actually were in the margin of half a second. All four of these cars half a second quicker than Corey Preston, who currently runs in fifth and has got himself a bit of a margin. Back to Kurt Stenberg, who has not got himself a margin. Back to Brett Loxton. They make their way up the hill. And Loxton was looking a little bit closer out of turn number one, but hasn't quite been able to use the exit how he would have wanted as he tries to close up to the back of the TTR car. But look in the background. The ASM car of Thomas McMillan was once again getting very sideways through the S's and that's not a corner that you know we're used to driving GT cars they don't slide there that's a non-corner for us it doesn't even matter but all of a sudden in these videos it's because they're sliding around quite a lot as we go back to Riley Blythe at the moment who's right behind uh, the drive of Adam Andrew Welter again and uh, he's still continuing to fight but he must have been fighting just a little bit too hard because there is a bit of rear wing damage to the back of Riley Blythe which should hurt him in a straight line but it's not going to hurt him on the brakes as he closes up very quickly a little bit too quickly as he runs up the circuit as well. So for Blythe, he's continuing to push on, just not able to make a move happen as he gets very sideways once again. So this is another battle pack, not quite as nose to tail uh, as some other battles, but Andrew Zakerson, he wants to make it as close as some of the other battles because he tries to get a nose up there against Riley Blythe, but wasn't able to carry the momentum down the next straight, which is one of the things you have to try and manage here at Watkins Glen. There's so many places you can be so much quicker on entry and you can easily get a pass done. You're just going to destroy your exit. Yeah, and possibly destroy your tyres as well. And I think that's something else that these guys are having to keep in mind. As we said at the beginning of the broadcast, as Brett Loxton's off the track, uh, managed to keep it all together and didn't lose a position, but he's under intense pressure from Cooper Webster right now. He just ran wide and turned number 10 there on the exit. And... Uh, oh, Riley like Blythe! Riley Blythe is around in the middle of the track and somehow wasn't hit by the other cars. And he's done that just about all on his own. Just on the grass, on the exit, just burst into wheel spin and couldn't hold on to it right in the middle of the track. And a lot of cars had to take avoiding action. That was Guy Leach who really had to try and swerve to avoid. But in the end, Riley Blythe will now make his way. Oh, he actually apparently is still driving on track. So he has recovered. Will be down in 25th, three seconds behind Tim Weston. So for Blythe, who qualified in 16th, he's now stoned at last. Yeah, he actually, um, I think he lit up the rear tires as he just clipped the grass with only his right-hand rear tire there as he was coming over the exit. And I think he may have just overcorrected that slightly, which is, uh, I have to say, very uncharacteristic of Riley Blythe. We used to be... Uh, teammates and have done a lot of racing together i know him pretty well and that's very uncharacteristic but now cooper webster is going side by side with thomas mcmillan as they come through the shoot and uh looks like cooper webster is gonna have that done getting himself uh back past thomas mcmillan there and now chasing back after brett loxton so these guys are all ebbing and flowing a little bit with their pace as uh now harley haber back in uh 10th is uh, looking up at Thomas McMillan and thinking, hmm, ninth sounds better than 10th. And he can also see quite a few cars up ahead of him. Of course, Corey Preston, who's just gone over the hill up ahead of Harley Haber there, is in uh, fifth position. So all still to play for here. One minor mistake from any of these guys, and it can be a real loss for them. But um, as I was talking about before, the big tie temperatures here at McMillan. Every time we come through this corner, someone has a moment, and this time it's McMillan. We just had a huge moment as we have the first of our cars pitting as well. But McMillan's now going to be under intense pressure here from Harley Haber, and Harley Haber, as we have seen previously, does not like to give more than an inch. And that time, he just didn't feel, I think, that he was uh, quite up far enough to get himself past McMillan there. But these guys are going to be using their tyres pretty intensely in 46 degrees track temp today. is uh, That's really intense. I think I've only probably raced in a handful of races that are as hot or hotter than that. Um, so these guys probably are in a little bit of an unknown area for a lot of them. And they're really going to have to play that uh, that tyre game at the moment. They're already lapping 1.4 seconds slower than uh, their fastest laps. Yeah, and I'm actually very interested that a few drivers have decided to come into the pits already. In the oh, as uh, Harley Haber now finds his way past Thomas McMillan, so another pass there as Thomas McMillan. Uh, he actually was going through the carousel, which is a very cambered corner. Completely lost it on entry and was chasing it up the hill, and uh, just ran wide. And that was just as easy as you like for Harley Haber, who now slots up uh, into P number eight. Is now Dane Warren is thinking of an attack. 
on the back of Sam Block Blacklock. And is this his chance or is he going to continue to stay right behind? Indeed he does. But Wayne Burke thinks about the inside, but not able to be as committed as possible. But for Corey Preston and uh, Brenton Hobson have now dived in the pits on lap 10 of a 32-lap race. Does, not, does that not potentially sound like a two-stop strategy, Zach? Um, it kind of does. I mean, I... I don't know what the fuel burn is here. I, I'm going to quickly check because I did actually do some laps here the other night. I might be able to quickly reference my uh, my VRS and uh, and have a bit of a look. But uh, it does seem very early. Still 22 laps remaining here at Watkins Glen. And as as you've said, both they only have limited amount of fuel in the tank. Uh, so I think now Kurt Stenberg's in. So a lot of drivers are pulling the pin pretty early. That's interesting. I think we might be in for a two-stop race because we were saying, uh, were we not, that 50.4 50, 50 litres is the most fuel you can take on board. And I just had a look at my uh, VRS. I was using about 4.2 litres per lap. So according to my calculations, Bo, that's around 11 laps to 12 laps a stint, possibly 13 if you're pushing it uh, to the extreme. So we could actually definitely be on for a two-stop race here today. Well, fantastic. We've got an even bigger strategy ploy to have in this series, and we've seen some two-stop races in the past. Think back to last season and that classic of Phillip Island, where we saw the likes of Blacklock, and we saw uh, that was uh, Jake Burden as well, all fighting it out for the win and dying laps. Wayne Burke was in there as well, and Wayne Burke's in this fight for the lead once again. So maybe a bit of deja vu, but can he get the win this time around? He was close last time, but right now he's only sliding. Uh, heading into the boot section at the moment. And Ethan Warren has just fallen off a little bit on this battle pack. So maybe Ty is getting a little bit bad for him because the fastest laps we've seen in this race have been upwards of a 52.8. And at the moment, they're only doing 54.3. So the drop-off is pretty big. So I wouldn't be surprised, especially as we now work lap 11. This would be a pretty clean cut into, you know, two different stops. Uh, over the race if they were to come in at the end of this lap. So I'm going to be watching with eager eyes as uh, Dane Warren gets very racy heading into this next corner. But that's really just him using the different lines, just trying to use different parts of the track to close in on Sam Blacklock. But this is going to get very congested very quick as they make their way onto pit road potentially this time around because uh, that's not something a lot of drivers practice pit entry. So if they're all breaking at different points, it could get very nasty very quickly. But it looks like they're all going to dive. Well, two of them have. It's a 50-50 split as they dive onto the brakes. And as you can see, getting very tight under brakes. Dane Warren right underneath. Loxton's in. And pretty much, well, pretty much that entire pack behind has come in as well. And in fact, nearly the entire field, except Wayne Burke and Ethan Warren, are now coming into the pits. So this is a very big call for Burke and Warren to be deciding to go one lap extra. Yeah, it's risky as well. We were talking about the difference in lap times, uh, old tyres versus new tyres. And at this rate, uh, Corey Preston could be on to, to lap Wayne and Ethan here or, or to pass them in the pit stop uh, strategy. So that could be very interesting. It was only about three or four seconds back to uh, back to Corey Preston, Preston prior to the pit stop happening. He could lead. He yeah, he's going to lead. He lead. Is. He's into turn number one now, and Blacklock's only just off the jacks. And in fact, Blacklock's been beaten out of the pits by Dane Warren as well. But your new race leader is Corey Preston. There you go. So Corey Preston reading the uh, reading the conditions better than anybody. And uh, that will be helped by his uh, pretty impressive uh, lap time as he came out of the pits at 53.4, which uh, was his fastest lap of the race so far for Corey Preston. So we'll have to see where Wayne Burke and Ethan Warren do come out. But uh, judging from what we've seen in this initial pit stop phase, it's probably safe to say that it's uh, not going to be in oh, front. Oh, Burke with a big slide under brakes. That was a MotoGP bike and he's sliding on the exit as well. He has completely overshot this pit stop strategy. There is nothing left of the tires. You can see Ethan Warren in the background. This is like rain driving at the moment. They've got nothing. Under brakes, they're sliding. On power, they're sliding. Mid corner, not even touching the pedals, they're sliding as well. These tires have nothing left. You can see that they're almost running out to the grass as well. They've got a pit. They cannot afford to even try and make this a one stop. And indeed, Berg's going to dive in. And Ethan, Ethan Warren's going to come in as well as Brett Cananzi looks to the inside there of another Synergy Sim Racing car. Uh, Carl Stokes basically pushing him through this long right hander. Before our race leaders, Wayne Burke and Ethan Warren, that could be a potentially completely race-ending move for them in terms of fighting for this race win. Yeah, I, I actually feel like... Uh, I, th I feel like these guys might come out around Hobson and Stenberg and Loxton, possibly even lower than that. So this is, this is a really interesting development here. And 
doesn't look like Corey Preston is going to be leading for a dramatic amount of time. Looks like Dane Warren and Sam Blacklock are eager to make a move. But now that Dane's gotten past Blacklock, we'll see how he can stay with uh, the ASM car as they come down into turn one. And now we see Wayne Burke coming out of the pits. He's going to come out just ahead of Hobbo, looks like, but he's not going to have the speed down the end of the straight. I think he might just have enough clearance there, but uh, I think it was... Ethan Warren. Ethan Warren came out. Yeah, he came out behind Hobson and Stenberg there. So, bit of a... Uh, Bit of a bad call, unfortunately, there for Ethan. He was obviously the riskiest just being on the cusp of that uh, four-car train at the beginning of the race. He now finds himself down in uh, effectively, I think, position number seven uh, or, or six, possibly. So he's going to have a little bit of work to do to uh, get himself back to where he was. But credit to Kurt Stenberg, Brendan Hobson, making a good call there, jumping themselves up a spot or two. And uh, Wayne Burke's still actually surprisingly close to Sam Blacklock here and now he's got some fresher rubber he's got you know a lap on his uh, competitors Corey Preston already being reined in while I Dane Warren and his uh, tyres are a couple laps older as well so I think we'll see I think pretty much everyone will decide to pit for their second stop at around lap 20 lap 21 and then everyone will be on fairly even tyres towards the end um, but Corey Preston's going to have to run at a disadvantage for this uh, middle stint as now Ethan Warren fires it up the inside of Kurt Stenberg as they come through the heel there and a nice passing maneuver there for Ethan Warren who now cuts it wide to try and get some good exit speed and work himself back onto the rear of Brenton Hobson who is uh, currently sitting in effective sixth position so we are uh, few of us up in the comms box here superstitiously may feel that he will stay there for the rest of the race but if ethan warren has uh, anything to do with it that may not be the case for too much longer as ethan now charging up behind brendan oh, hobson just showing corey the preston's nose. wide corey preston's wide for turn one for your race lead sorry to cut across you there but it could be side by side through the s's for your race win and warren's on the brakes as corey preston doesn't leave much room it's getting very tight up front warren again all over the curve and Preston to the wall! Preston takes Warren with him! And your two race leaders are out of the race with big damage to both cars. And that is unbelievable. They're both on the brakes so they won't take any more victims with them. But this has just completely handed this race lead to Sam Blacklock and Wayne Burke. But we'll get a replay up on screen now. And the two cars are staying on track for now. So I wouldn't be surprised. There's a bit of words going on between the two at the moment. There's been history in the past. And this could be another chapter as, uh, Co uh, sorry, Corey Preston, just on old tires, wasn't able to keep the grip through the S's, slid wide and clips the wall at just the most horrible angle. It just snaps the rear of the car around and Warren had nowhere to go. And uh, indeed, there is a bit of a war of words. So yet another chapter of history between Dane Warren and Corey Preston as Sam Blacklock now takes for a race lead and Wayne Burke on slightly newer tires. Oh, sorry. Uh, Kananzi's just gone round, I think. Uh, yeah, and he's out. Uh, oh, he has, yes. That was Brett Cananzi just spun. We'll get a replay of that for you, ladies and gentlemen. But uh, Brett Cananzi was sitting fairly well up in 12th position and just coming out of the shoot section. He was all crossed up halfway through and uh, just kept it going and going and going and got hard on the brakes. Just nudged the wall, but um, maybe a bit of frustration there for Cananzi. And he's decided to uh, park that car back in the garage. But... Um, just going back to that incident before with Corey Preston and uh, Dane Warren, I have to say after seeing the attitude of Corey's car uh, as he came across for that left hander, I kind of felt it coming. It was pretty, it felt inevitable. Uh, and it was very unfortunate for those two guys to uh, get caught up. And it has softened the excitement of the race up the front just a little bit. But uh, there is a little bit of action going on elsewhere in the field. And right now it's P number 14 as we see Andrew Zakerson having to defend a little bit from Andrew Welter, who just bails out of that move in uh, opting for a better run out of the first corner. And he'll follow him up, but we will take you up to Loxton now, who's going down the inside of the bus stop on Hobson, but couldn't quite make it work. However, Brett Loxton has, uh, was tailing this train just a few laps ago and has made himself up on there pretty neatly. So I will not be surprised to see him uh, continuing to push forward. And uh, Kurt Stenberg and Ethan Warren have actually gotten past Hobson as well. So 
something's actually happened to him on this lap. Old uh, tires, because, I think. Well, he's only, I mean, he's only four or five laps, five laps, nearly six into this stint. So we're only halfway through the stint. I know those tires will be hurting tight. In fact, lap times have already dropped off pretty significantly, but uh, Hobson's last lap of 55.7, everyone else at least in the 54s. Uh, with the exception of a few people who maybe had to uh, take some avoiding action there. But now it's on again for position number 12 as, uh, or pardon me, 13 and 14. Zakerson actually getting overtaken there by Welter through the boot section. So good job there by Andrew. Having a pretty uh, crazy race this evening, but still progressing himself up forward. Pretty much sitting where he started. So a little bit of work to do for the uh, Velocity Sim Racing driver. But uh, all progress looking positive as it stands. Yeah, absolutely. So a lot of drivers have been making a lot of positions in their in the race at the moment, which is great to see. As uh, Wayne Burke and Sam Blacklock are getting very close to the moment, and Wayne Burke had every chance of going for a move in a turn number one on that lap. He had every chance to make it happen. It would have been probably pretty successful, but just decides to bail out of it. So a lot of strategy oh. being put there as Loxton. Now finds himself in a big moment up the hill through the S's. Contact's going to happen again. And second in your championship. Finds himself second in the wall in this race, which is a shame to see. But Webster is going to continue this fight side by side with the Synergy Sim Racing driver of Brenton Hobson. Who's going to play chicken on the brakes? It's going to be the ERT driver in the end who comes out on top. So a great move there as Brett Loxton really feeling the punishment of that damage. Harley Haber's now got past and that car looks near on undrivable. So second in the championship might just be about to fall a little bit further. Yeah, that's really unfortunate for Brett Loxton, but that's what happens when you're fighting hard. But now Wayne Burke is uh, trying it on for the lead, just having a little bit of a look on Sam Blacklock and right under the rear bumper of that TTR racing car. Good traction as he comes out of the toe. It's a drag race up into the final section of the boot, into the heel. Can he get it done? Wayne Burke, he's ahead before the apex. He makes it through unscathed and uh that is a change for the race lead and it goes to wayne burke from synergy sim racing so he's now got himself in the position can he now progress himself further up the road and start walking away oh, not if he keeps on putting the wheels on the grass like that he's not going to get anywhere he's just going to get a lot of wheel spin so he has to knuckle down now hit his marks keep it off the grass get the traction down and start working his way away from Sam Blacklock, our current championship leader. And uh, I've picked Wayne Burke to be a very contentious fighter in this championship. Uh, and I think that uh, today is a good opportunity for him. Fairly decent strength of field today, 3,624. So some good points on offer and uh, a win will definitely go in a good direction for that of Wayne Burke's championship hopes. But I would probably argue that wasn't the smartest thing to go for, in my opinion, because, you know, with how tight the fuel is at this race and, you know, with having to take a second pit stop later on, I think Wayne Burke might have been a little bit better just sitting behind and using the fuel, you know, and just saving it a little bit more because Blacklock didn't fight that, you know, into the uh, corner too hard. He was not willing to, you know, take it all the way to the apex. He was willing to just, all right, Wayne Burke, you go through, you take the position, and I'll just sit behind and fuel save a little bit. And I think that's probably... What Wayne should have done, just let Blacklock lead, let him use up the fuel, because they've got a big lead, three and a half seconds over Ethan Warren. I think maybe, just maybe, Wayne Burke made this race a little bit harder than he needed to, and he might have to get past Blacklock once again after the pit stops. Well, I will counter your uh, your point there, Bo. I actually think that that was very start from, smart from Wayne. He's actually uh, a, a, a lap less into this stint, so he has that extra lap of fuel uh, pretty much on board from the get-go. Not to mention he has been trailing Blacklock for the last five laps of this stint. Um, and we're probably expecting around 10, 11 lap stints for this race. Uh, so he's already done half of the fuel save and now he's letting Blacklock get half of the fuel save. But at the same time, he already has that extra lap um, on board. So I think Wayne's actually played it really well here. I suppose we'll have to wait until the uh, the final pit stop to uh, see whose point makes the, uh, the better one. But I think that Wayne Burke is really in a good position here. It's not starting to pull away from uh, Sam Blacklock too heavily. Sam doing a good job with that draft. And uh, I, I suspect, as you think as well, Bo, doing a little bit of fuel saving to help himself in that pit stop. But I think it just might not be enough. Wayne is starting to get a bit of a wriggle on now. 
as uh, as they come up through the S's. You can just see that lead starting to eke out already to half a second. But, uh, and that's pretty much, in fact, the top four cars earlier were separated by just half a second. So that's uh, a pretty dramatic la uh, lead uh, gap at the front of this pack for this race so far. Yeah, absolutely. But what we will do is just say to the YouTube chat who are watching, and it's great to see you guys getting engaged with the race. What do you think? Who do you think, you know, strategy is right? Or do you think there is another option that could be happening in the Wayne Burke versus Sam Blacklock fight for this raid lead, uh, race lead at the moment? But there is a pretty good fight happening at the moment between the Mean Machine and Kyle Stokes, who are continuing to go at it through the bus stop. And Highland has looked pretty good through the opening part of this lap, but Stokes looks a little bit stronger through the second half of the lap, but he's not getting a very good run through the carousel. Kind of get just having a bit of a wiggle there as we're on board at the moment with the Mean Machine. And what a privilege that is to be on board with the Mean Machine, but uh, it's just not quite quick enough in the second half of the lap. So for Adam Highland, just needs one lucky little break, and I think he can maybe get a pass done down into the bus stop chicane, because he, his car looks extremely strong up the S's and into turn number one. Yeah, but we can see being on board with Adam right now, how gentle they have to be on the throttle, how patient you have to be to drive one of these V8 supercars, especially in these hot conditions. I mean, just look how much lock he's putting in compared to how much response he is getting out of that car. It is minimal and you just have to wait and wait and wait and jab at it until you get it. So an extreme amount of skill and a patience being displayed from Alan Adam Highland right now because I'm sure all he wants to do is uh, ride the back of Carl Stokes' car and uh, just send one on him as soon as he possibly can. But to get there, he needs to be patient. He needs to keep his cool. One person who is uh, not keeping his cool so much at the moment is Harley Haber, who is in maximum attack mode, looking to make his way past Brenton Hobson, who, uh, after all that drama, has somehow managed to find himself back in sixth position. So he's uh, going to have to hold on to it for a little bit because Harley Haber, as we have seen previously, very talented, very fast, but very aggressive driver. And that's uh, something that's going to be probably sitting in the mind of the uh, more experienced uh, Hobson uh, in terms of maybe his uh, age. I'm not actually sure how old you are, Hobbo, but I'm sure from seeing you race, there's a great <laughs> amount of experience on those shoulders. And uh, that'll be something that he's taking into consideration as he watches the Redback Racing uh, car, just maybe watching that Redback Racing car a little too much in his mirrors as he missed his braking marker coming through that section there. Um, but. Harley Haber is looking very strong right now. And as we said, always willing to make an attack. And he's already got a little bit of open and pushing Brendan Hobson up the hill. He doesn't want to hold on at all. He wants to get the move done now. He pulls out as they come into the hill. Doesn't leave much room on the outside for Hobbo there, but just enough to make things work. And uh, Brendan Hobson having to recede a position once again as uh, Harley Habert now trying to make his way back up to Cooper Webster and getting himself into a top five position. Yeah, a great move there. And uh, another very calculated move by um, Harley Haber. We've seen him make some very rash pass in the past, but he's just being a bit more calculated as Brett Lockson continues to plummet through the field and just conceding the place now to Carl Stokes and Adam Pyland. So he is in limp mode. He is desperately trying to get that KRF car to just some kind of points. Don't, you know, just make sure you finish. Don't DNF the race. Get the points on the board and walk away and hope for a better round. But that's not going to be how you get good points. That's just how you get good style points as he gets very sideways out of the final corner as uh, Highland continues to try and find a way past on the driver of Carl Stokes in front. You can see how much he's closing up into turn number one. His car looks a lot better through this opening sector, but just not able to get the power out of the turn number one. Gets a bit of a wiggle on the grass. Now as they make their way through, the S is probably a little bit too far back once again. Yeah, he is just a bit... <laughs> oh, I'm actually geez. watching Brent, Brett Loxton on board right now, and you can see why he is struggling in that car. In fact, he's pulling off to the side and letting other drivers by, which... Um, got to give a tip of the hat there to Brett Loxton because that is a uh, very classy driving he knows that he's not fully in control of that vehicle and uh and you can tell he's got about four about 20 degrees of lock uh right hand down as he's coming down the straight there so uh good job for Brett of look Brett Loxton staying out of the way but very unfortunate that uh he's not going to be able to really participate in the race to the best of his ability but uh Brendan Hobson has actually picked up the speed again and he's now starting to push Harley Haber once more. 
little bit of a gap between them now, but Brenton Hobson seems like once he gets tucked up behind another car, he's able to do a lot more than uh, than he is when he's leading. So maybe a little bit of uh, confidence in, in following there. And if Harley can uh, keep producing the lap times that he's doing, he's not quite going to get onto Cooper Webster. So he does have to pick up the pace a bit as well. And uh, maybe Brenton Hobson... Just, pits. Uh, yes, so... That's actually a little earlier than I was expecting. I thought maybe around lap 20, 21, but uh, 22, 1, 22, pardon me, but he could just be covering off Sam Blacklock here. We saw the massive amount of uh, undercut that Corey Preston got earlier in the race. He was the first one into the pits and uh, Wayne getting in a very quick middle stint there, very short middle stint, and he'll look to uh, have the fresh tires on this outlap and pull a bit of a lead. Uh, he'll hope for an unrecoverable lead for Sam Blacklock. So, have to see how this goes, but we can actually see quite a few cars now, including McMillan, Hobson, Loxton, Stokes, Pickering, Zacherson, Miller, and Sharp, and Blythe as well, all in the pit lane as oh, it stands. Burke doesn't have clear track either. He's going to have to pass one of the Zuva racing cars, or Chris Cox said, and Burke's best bet is getting a good run through the S's, which he looks to be doing at the moment, closing bit by bit, having to use in the dirty air, car sliding around. But for Burke, this could be critical as Coxhead gets into the grass a little bit, desperately trying to carry momentum, and Burke is not going to get the pass done before the pit stop. So right now, he's not able to use the new tyres, and we said that they, these tyres are not lasting long. They're not lasting particularly long for Chris Coxhead, who goes wide through the bus stop, which means he goes wide through the carousel, which means Wayne Burke goes very much through on the inside as now Tyler McMillan finds himself in a bit of a scrap side by side into the bus stop having a fight side by side with a Synergy Sim Racing car of Brenton Hobson great racing you don't see them go side by side clean through there very often and you don't see them go side by side through the carousel very often but they're doing it anyway but Hobson might not have the grip on the exit a bit of a squeeze there by McMillan but he now gets the inside into this incredibly cambered left hander which means that for McMillan he's not going to get the best entry which he doesn't but he does get a good exit and Hobson, Hobson does not he lights up the rear tires. McMillan fakes to the outside, fakes to the inside, gets up there. And now Hobson in the off camber part of the track has no recovery unless he can now get a great exit, which he looks to. So this is going to continue on for yet another corner potentially as McMillan doesn't particularly defend at the moment. And Hobson not looking very racy at the moment, doesn't decide to uh, pull out at the last second either. So he will continue, but more important matters are at hand because we have a whole slew of cars in. Sam Blacklock, Ethan Warren, Kurt Stenberg, Cooper Webster, and Harley Haber all into the pits. But this is the big talking point now. Where is Wayne Burke? He is just making his way past the start finish straight now. And it's all going to be about where Sam Blacklock comes out in respect. You would expect that uh, Burke gets ahead, and he does, and by a much bigger margin than I ever expected. That is huge. Yeah, I think, um, as I was saying, running that uh, extra lap in that first in really opened up the fuel options there for Wayne Burke and also a very short middle stint. So he probably only had to top up maybe 35 odd liters while Sam was probably looking more at about 45, um, which I think is, I think it's roughly about uh, maybe five or six seconds worth of fuel there. I'm not particularly great on the, uh, on the fuel flow for these things. But um, as you can see, the gap has extended quite dramatically as it stands on the timing. Wow. It looks like it's uh, it's three and a half seconds. 1.2 seconds shorter in the stops, though. Yeah, which is um, pretty dramatic. I mean, only eight tenths faster than uh, Blacklock, actually. Uh, so both of them fit. In fact, those two guys were very quick on their pit stops comparatively to everybody else. So I think both of them have done a very good job of saving fuel there. But I think Wayne's, uh, Wayne's initial strategy of just running that extra lap um, has really paid dividends for him in this final stint. Well, so it would seem. So Wayne Burke currently out to a fantastic effective race lead, but still a few more drivers yet to pit, including Adam Highland in the main machine and Andrew Welter as well, as Tim Weston finds himself losing a bunch of spots into the long left-hander, including from Andrew Zacherson and Kyle Leach, who all work themselves up one more spot. The Harley Haber now finds himself side by side with Thomas McMillan down to the inside late on the brakes. It's a downhill braking zone, so it's not easy, but Harley Haber just about makes it look easy. Under brakes, McMillan though, gonna get a better exit until he bursts in a wheel spin and uh, just decides to sit behind Haber for the time being. And uh, Haber just struggling to make the apex a little bit into the corner. And McMillan thought about making a move out of it, but couldn't quite do it. 
And in the background, you have the Synergy Sim Racing car. Brenton Hobson just looking on, waiting for any moment between these two to kick off as they make their way into the final two corners, which is all about the flow, making sure you get one apex, get the other. And Harley Haber manages to do that perfectly and pulls away just a little bit more. Yeah, good job there from Harley. And uh, he's been showing some good pace and some really good performances in uh, in this. Well, this is the first season I've personally seen him in and uh, been pretty impressed so far. A couple of, uh, as you said, exuberant moves uh, earlier in the season, but really calming himself down today and putting on a good show and uh, doing his sponsors proud for that Redback Racing Team car as uh, McMillan running it out to the very edge, even using a little bit of that runoff on the uh on the exit of the corner at the top of the hill there so he had a little bit of a slide going and he's not going to be wanting to do that too early in this stint he's still got a little way to go on those tires as we now look to uh michael cracknell who's got a bit of a run on mihail latishov who i believe has just come out of the pit so uh michael cracknell should have a little bit more speed here but not quite able to uh get up to the rear of latishov's car before they make it into the bus stop of chicane so he does have uh, hot tyres, does Michael Cracknell, Crackers. So maybe might be able to do something in the next half a lap on Mahal as he just gets those tyres up to temperature. Although in this 46 degree track temp, those tyres are going to get heated up very quickly, I would imagine. But they're starting to move up on the back of Chris Coxhead and Greg Sharp here. So this is another battle that's just starting to form. They probably won't want to battle too much, just pour themselves up onto the back of this little... Uh, of this little pack here and uh and make something out of that but looks like Coxhead. oh it looks like mihail's actually just given the position of michael cracknell there so crackers moving himself up into uh position number seven uh position number 17 i believe uh and a good job of doing that in his uh now privately entered holden commodore there so he's got Chris Coxhead and Greg Sharp. Oh, oh and Loxton's gone! He's gone in the ground and he is out. And we'll get uh, a replay of that for you, ladies and gentlemen. And I have to say, uh, we'll get the onboard because it really just show it does show oh. you how difficult this car is to drive right now. On Look the grass. Loxton, on, he just, you know, just got it on the grass, just struggling with that car. Got very loose at the mid corner there and just ran him a little bit wide, caught it on the grass, and uh, a bad day gets even worse for Brett Loxton. Qualified relatively poorly, I think he would say, and uh, and then having a bit of a uh, contact earlier in the race and now doing it all by himself. That'll be one to forget to Brett Loxton, but like a true racer, he's gonna continue on and uh, bag whatever points he can just in case, because you never know what can happen in a championship. Yeah, exactly. Every point can matter. And, you know, if he knows he's not going to make all the rounds later in the season, you know, going to get these eight rounds in the championship, you know, he needs these points as well. So uh, he's doing what he needs to do to keep himself in title flight. And it's still early days. Like I say, there are drop rounds at play. So he cannot be counted out for this championship by any means just yet. But uh, at the moment, the gap at the front is closing just a little bit. But Wayne Burke doing a great job just to keep the gap pretty stable, about 2.3 seconds. So no battles potentially happening for your race lead there is one battle still happening for p number seven harley haver still leading from mcmillan who's just keeping very close and within touching distance as is brenton hobson who's in number nine which is of course an upside down six so he's still staying pretty true to himself but mcmillan just trying to get closer and closer to the back of haver and if he can just make up maybe another tenth and a half down this next few corners he might get a slipstream run down uh, up into the s's and might have a shot into the infamous bus stop chicane. So we'll see if uh, McMillan can be very feisty on the brakes, can just get a few more meters of the gap down between himself and the red back racing car, but it's not happening at the moment. Needs a bit more margin, and it's just not happening for the ASM driver. So that's a shame to see for him, but he's still got eight more laps to try and make this move happen. As you make your way through these fast S's, you can see how close they're running out to the wall. Brenton Hobson was definitely the winner there as uh, he got the closest to the wall. But you can see the gap now between McMillan and Haber just closing and closing and closing down the straight and are just not quite enough. And you can see how Lady's throwing it on the brakes using a lot more curb than Harley Haber threw there. So he's willing to play it a bit more risky with the off tracks, the slowdowns, and anything that might perhaps deter a driver from cutting the corners. McMillan's not afraid of them at all as they now slide their way through the carousel and into the boot section of the track. 
Yeah, very nice con car control from McMillan there. But we are looking now at Chris Coxhead, who is uh, still battling, or has actually just gotten through on uh, Greg Sharp there. So nicely done there for Chris Coxhead. Now Michael Cracknell's going to be able to have a go at Sharpie as they uh, start making their way down into the boot section now. Uh, Michael Cracknell, a very experienced V8 supercar driver, and uh, he has done a lot of racing, especially here around Watkins Glen in uh, the Scop series and the official series as well. So he's going to be looking around using that different colored cement in the middle of the track there. It's where a lot of the good grip and a lot of the traction is, and he's using that to his advantage, running it a little bit wider on the entry to the corner to get himself some nice exit speed and just slowly closing up onto Greg Sharp now. There are a couple of cars who are getting into battles, but um, I've noticed the gap for the lead has actually come down a little bit as well. But this time around, uh, a 153.653 challenges the 153.656. Uh, so very close for Sam Blacklock and Wayne Burke, but Blacklock has been coming in a little bit and Cox Coxhead off the road, just up ahead of Greg Sharp there, managing to keep it all together. And, uh, doesn't look like he's going to suffer from that one at all. So this little car train brewing and uh, Riley Blythe's actually working his way onto the back of this as well after having a shocking start to the race uh, and being as low as 25th, he's worked his way back onto this group of cars. And uh, that's a real credit to the pace that he's got in that car and uh, also to the never give up attitude. You can always work yourself back into something. And right now, Riley Blythe is working his way back onto the rear of Mihail Ladyshov's car. And I feel that within a lap or two, he could really start making his way through this pack. But we take you back to McMillan and Haber because McMillan has been looking lap after lap to try and put one on Haber. And he's looking ever closer now as they come up. Nice traction there from McMillan. He's gonna show the nose a little bit. Haber just got a little bit squirrely on the exit there. McMillan tucking back in for the slipstream. Gonna dive it down at the last second or he's gonna pull back in and uh, just have to suffer behind that Redback racing car for at least one more corner. Might try and shove it down the inside here, but not feeling too brave. And with Hobbo lurking in the background there, probably a smart decision to make. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, the gap for the race lead has now expanded up to three seconds. So something has happened to Sam Blacklock last time around. Lost seven tenths of a second. And it's expanding once again. It's now up to 3.3 seconds uh, on my live Delta. It's telling me so something not quite right with Blacklock potentially and he can't afford to lose too much time because uh, the car behind Ethan Warren set the quickest lap of the race of the last pass around but Riley Blythe in the meantime he's not worried about fastest laps he's only worried about the fastest passes because he is already onto the back and making moves Mihail Ladishov is his first target and as he slides his way into the penultimate corner now into the final corner Chris Coxhead cannot be feeling safe as all at all as our Riley Blythe continues to range onto the back. And while well, I said he was ranging onto the back, I'm saying he's ranging past now. As Thomas McMillan now goes and uh, thinks about a move into the bus stop chicane, a risky place to do it. But can he get it done? No, he can't. So we'll go back to Riley Blythe, who is continuing to make moves, but just a little bit far back at the moment on his former teammate, Michael Cracknell, who uh, recently left Evolution Racing Team, a very strong driver, and uh, should have a drive potentially for the Scops Montreal race, which is coming up in just a few days time, which is great to see. But at the moment, McMillan trying once again to get past Harley Hay, but he can't do it. Thought about the outside, couldn't make it happen. Will he have the run into this next corner? He goes for the outside. Will he go for a late switch to the inside? No, he doesn't, which turns out better than any pass I tried on Michael Healy in the Porsches. But McMillan at the moment trying to go for the run on the exit. Can't make it happen, though, and he's not going to make it happen at any point point with that move he is all kinds of out of sideways and his biggest threat now comes behind in the drive of Brenton Hobson who could have gone for a move couldn't quite do it though so a good racing at the moment Zach yeah Webster going up the inside of Kurt Stenberg now they're gonna have to go two by two through the final section of corners Kurt Stenberg closing the door around the outside very confident move there and a nice move by Stenberg to defend that position from Cooper Webster who is really applying the pressure now Webster though got a nicer run out of the final corner he's gonna have the draft and possibly make a move into turn one although he may not want to but he does goes down the inside very late on the brakes locks up the rears and slides it into turn one almost backwards and uh, Kurt Stenberg there very polite and uh, leaving 
some room for Cooper Webster as he had to rejoin the track there. So very good driving from both of those guys there. But Kurt Stenberg holds on for the time being. That Evolution Racing Team car of Cooper Webster, who we've seen put in some stellar performances recently. Think back to Alton Park just last week where he was doing very well and uh, also challenging for the race lead uh, in other races this season too at Bathurst. But now Blythe is making his way past Michael Cracknell. So he dishes out his old teammate and says, thank you very much, my friend. I'll uh, continue on. And Greg Sharp's been doing a good job to uh, just keep on plugging away at his laps and building a little bit of a gap there. It's going to make it a little bit more difficult for uh, him to be caught by Riley Blythe, who is starting to charge up behind him. And uh, just a gap check at the lead for you, ladies and gentlemen. It has extended now to 5.1 seconds. And uh, before, only a few laps ago, that number was coming down quite dramatically. It's now extending and uh, kind of hovering around five seconds now, but it is ebbing and flowing within a couple of tenths either way very quickly. So it seems like uh, Blacklock has possibly just run out of pace in that car, pushed too hard and used up that tire. And especially in these um, hotter track temps, the more you push those tires, the more you heat them up. And Haber finally uh, gets overtaken there. Or no, he doesn't. He, uh, he, Thomas McMillan's still trying to put a move on, but doesn't quite get it done. So Harley Haber doing a heroic job of holding on to sixth position for the time being. But Brenton Hobson's licking his lips behind these guys as well. And he's just waiting for the one opportunity that he needs to do both of these guys in because I think that Harley Haber and Thomas McMillan here, two very address aggressive drivers are gonna be fighting till the very end. But Warren Pickering in his Fusion Sim racing car looking at down the inside of Carl Stokes and he should have the preferred line as they come up through the S's. Stokes though, not afraid to go around the outside. Pickering pushes him wide, but Stokes managed to keep it there. But now Pickering's got better overspeed from using that wider line through the second section of the S's there. And he's gonna have the speed as they come into the bus stop, pulls himself out. Can Stokes be on the brake like brakes late enough? He can, and he just cuts across the nose of Warren Pickering there. They oh. both keep it together in the position stay. And it's still on between Haber and McMillan. He was just about alongside through the carousel. Through the left hand of the follows, he is trying everything, throwing every trick in the book at Harley Haber at the moment, who continues not to crack, but he will not let go of that inside line at the moment, which is exactly what he has to do. But look at Hobo in the background, just experimenting with lines, trying to get a good run. That is actually giving him a very nice run, but he's not close enough, but McMillan is close enough, that is for sure. Will he attempt to move into this next corner? He thinks to the inside, has to back out of it though, but it's closing very rapidly, almost a bumper to the back of the Redback Racing Team car who doesn't meet the apex. Now goes a little bit wide through this next corner. McMillan can kind of try and get a much wider line or entry into the corner, carry the speed on exit, get a good run here. You can see just how much they're struggling for grip as the gap between Blacklock and Warren now comes down to just two seconds and Warren continuing just to punch in the quickest laps of the current cars on the current tires. He's taking four tenths a lap at the bare minimum. If he can find a bit more, he might be able to get to the back of Blacklock before this race ends. But McMillan just searching, just trying to get something to happen on Harley Haber. But it's not happening at the moment as they dive into turn one once again. McMillan late on the brakes, not happening. But it is all happening for Cooper Webster at the moment. who is uh, trying to make his way past Kurt Stenberg. And we saw him have that big moment at turn one trying to pass Stenberg. But we're not at turn one anymore. We're heading into the bus stop. But he's just not close enough once again. So he'll try and set himself up over the next few corners. Just get a little bit closer. And maybe have another crack at turn one. Or set himself up for lap number 31 through the S's and into the bus stop. Yeah, I think um, a few people here are going to have to strategize their one move. Because it's very difficult to pass around here. We've talked about people using different lines to make moves work. You can just as easily use them to defend as well. And uh, two drivers who have been doing that extremely well at the moment, Kurt Stenberg and, uh, and also Harley Haber, who's still coming under pressure once again from Thomas McMillan. And it's always the same section as, of the track as they come down through the chute. And now just 
very, very gently. A little bump there for Thomas Mann. Oh, he's oh. almost lost it. My goodness. He's getting very eager. And now Brenton Hobson is side by side. And Thomas McMillan may have just thrown that position away. Hobson goes round the outside, looking to hold it tough. A little bit of a bump and rub there. And McMillan... Disqualified? Disqualified! Possibly been disqualified. So, uh, we will get confirmation of that when we can for you, ladies and gentlemen. It does look like Thomas McMillan, unfortunately, has had some contact there, and that has ended his race. He's gotten a black flag and has been disqualified from the event. And we saw how hard he was pushing all throughout that race, and maybe just a few knocks here and there were uh, just enough to send him over that threshold for incident count. So that is very unfortunate for him. A big sigh of relief, though, I'm sure, for Harley Haber, because as him and uh, as Hobbo and McMillan were fighting there, he managed to pull out a bit of a lead. And now that he's got one less car to deal with, uh, he doesn't so much have to worry about Hobbo either. And Hobbo's pace has been on and off all throughout this race. So with that advantage that he has right now, I think, uh, I think Harley Haber has that one pretty much in the bag. I think the man who's really looking for the move now is Cooper Webster because he is still within striking distance of uh, the TTR machine of Kurt Stenberg. And he's been looking for ways past all this way through the last few laps. And uh, even though he's a very young driver, Cooper Webster, you can see him studying and figuring out what he can do in this final lap and a half to get himself past. But he is going to have to get himself into just a slightly better range if he wishes to make an attack on Kurt in the last lap. Yeah, absolutely. So he's going to have to try something in these next few corners just to get that gap down. Just a nip or tuck of a meter here, a meter there. It all helps at the end of this race as Adam Highland in the meme machine is thinking about a move on the Fusion Sim Racing car as they struggle for grip out of the long right hand and now heading into one of the bigger braking zones on this circuit. And he's thinking about a move, can't commit to a move though as Pickering is late on the brakes, maybe a little bit too late, doesn't quite get the apex. And uh, he's getting a bit sideways on the exit as well as they all scramble for grip in 46 degree track temp. Tires are absolutely ruined. They've all been forced onto a two stop. And you can see there, they're all getting very close as Carl Stokes is out in front and Adam Highland absolutely zigzagging unintentionally on the power out of that corner there. And he's just struggling, trying to get the traction down, but it's just not happening. We'll go back up to Cooper Webster, who is on his very last attempt here as Riley Blythe now finds himself out of the race. So we'll try and figure out what has happened there. Just a few meters from the track. And he goes for a big move, loses it on the brakes and gets a bit of contact to boot. And he finds himself the second driver disqualified from this race. Cooper Webster also for ERT. Not going to be close enough. Kurt Stenberg able to get himself just out of the danger zone for now. We'll go back to Warren Pickering, Kyle Stokes and Adam Highland as they make their way through the S's now. One of the fastest points on the circuit. And Kyle Stokes trying to go as fast as he can because the Fusion Sim Racing driver behind just lurking, getting closer every moment, but not close enough into the bus stop. So we could be expecting quite a few passes potentially happening in the final corners of this race as your leaders still making their way through the boot section at the moment. Battles raging on. Stenberg still trying to run away from Cooper Webster. Stenberg a little bit wider than he would have liked and drifting through the corner as well. So that's not ideal. What is ideal though was Wayne Burke's strategy. It was a two stop. He went for a different strategy to most others. He went longer in the first stint, took a shorter stint in the second. And what that resulted in is a two second lead, which he has only run with. He's got it out to five seconds now over Sam Blacklock. And we said at the start of the season, way back at Laguna Seca, which was also an American round, Wayne Burke, he can challenge for titles this season. He can fight Blacklock. And now he's going to take his very first notch on the belt. His first race victory in season four here in round four. Wayne Burke is going to be your race winner. Sam Blacklock brings it home in P number two with Ethan Warren in P number three. Kurt Stenberg only just going to hold on for position number four as Cooper Webster records a top five. Harley Haber, he was fighting all the way against Thomas McMillan, who apparently they two, those two crashed in the 7.15 race, but there was no repeat for Harley Haber. He notches P number six and uh, Brenton Hobson one position lower than what he would expect. Carl Stokes will hold on to position number eight as Warren Pickering and Adam Highland do their best to cross the line and the Mean Machine does what the Mean Machine does and he finishes across the line. Guy Leach trying to get past the driver of uh, David Miller wasn't able to make it happen 
and are looking for any other battles on track. But that might just be the end of the action. But my boy, Zach, there was a lot of action. Yeah, my voice is actually starting to die uh, because there was so much. And I mean, that's, you know, we said at the beginning of the race, Watkins Glen is one of the best races tracks. And uh, as you have seen from the uh, one hour and five minutes worth of action that we had tonight, ladies and gentlemen, one hour and two minutes rather, uh, it absolutely did not disappoint side by side through almost entire laps for some of these cars and some absolutely fantastic battles all throughout with a little bit of drama to boot. Absolutely. So what we will do is we'll get your results up on screen and Wayne Burke would take the race victory after an hour and two minutes of racing. So quite a long here at Watkins Glen International, but he played the strategy right and he managed to take the victory over Sam Blacklock, who in the YouTube chat says he did not enjoy that race. Well, Zach, you finished second, only just ahead of Ethan Warren, who comes home for a podium. Bert Stenberg in position number four, only just by three tenths of a second over Cooper Webster. Ollie Haber in P number six with Brenton Hobson, seventh. Carl Stokes, his teammate, in eighth as well. So a good day for the Synergy Sim Racing cars. Warren Pickering comes home in P number nine with Adam Hyland recording a top 10 in Meme Machine fashion. Andrew Welter did well to uh, make himself up into 11th position. Guy Leach had a bit of a quiet race, but finished 12th up from 21st. So a good job from him. Similarly from Andrew Zakerson starting 20th and ending up in 13th position. Greg Sharp moved from 22nd up to 14th. And Mahal Ladishov uh, finished in 15th position. Michael Krakenel finished in 16th with Brett Loxton, early dramas and a uh, lot of damage to that car trooping home to uh, come home in 17th position. Tim Weston uh, came home in 18th with Chris Coxhead. He started to drop off the pace, didn't quite see what happened to him in the last portion of that event, uh, but he ended up in 19th position. And then the first of our non-finishers and the first of our two disqualified drivers, Riley Blythe and Thomas McMillan, unfortunately picking up too many incidents throughout that race to be able uh, to be counted as completed. Corey Preston having a massive accident with uh, the uh, with the two leading cars, Corey Preston and Dane Warren. And that was very unfortunate to see Brett Cananzi losing it all by himself and uh, calling it quits early in the race. And uh, didn't see what happened to David Miller, but he also succumbed at uh, the same lap as all those guys as well. So um, that was a awesomely entertaining race and very unfortunate to see uh, Warren and Preston you know, coming together. But when you're fighting for the lead in that kind of intensity and, and when you're racing, I mean, these kinds of things happen. And um, I'm glad that we just got uh, some some really fantastic racing overall from everyone. Yeah, we absolutely did. It turned out to be another classic in the Monday Night Official Series Championship. But we do have a few more broadcasts for you this week, which should be full of entertaining action as well. And it all starts on Wednesday night, of course. And it's going to be the GT3 cars once again, they're traveling to Japan. They're not going to Alton Park once more. It's Japan. The Okayama circuit, which I think is a fantastic circuit for racing. So we should see some great racing there, especially down that long back straight heading into the one of the tightest hairpins you will ever find in our racing. And only the Japanese could come up with a circuit as entertaining as that. But uh, the, uh, the British drivers or the British circuit makers, they try pretty entertaining circuits as well because the LeBlanc Australian Online Supercar Series heads to Donington Park. And uh, it's one of the better layouts, I would say, at Donington, Zach, because they're not using the GP circuit. It's the flat-out national circuit. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm not actually a massive fan of Donington full stop. Oh. Because, um, yeah, sorry about that. But, um, you know, it's always fun to uh, drive V8 supercars in a close quarters uh, track like that. And I'm sure it'll be very entertaining. And um, we'll see a lot of on-track passing there because it uh, can be a decent race track to pass at for sure. Absolutely, and what you can expect for overtakes is on Saturday. The Oceanic Endurance Championship Season 2, round number 6. It's the 8 hours of Le Mans, and well, there's more than a few straights there to get a pass on, especially if you're an LMP1 against the GTEs. It's always a crazy amount of action in that series, so be sure to watch around for that one on Saturday night, because there is a whole heap of good action here on V8 Online all throughout the week. Well, from behalf of myself and Mr. Zachary Hanlon and Scott Fountain in the director's booth, thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.